Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be going through the anterior apprehension test for the shoulder, which is also known as the crank test. We're also going to be throwing in the fulcrum test and Job's relocation all at the same time because they're so interlinked. But to start with, let's focus on the first one, the anterior apprehension test, aka the crank test. So what is this test used for? This test is used to detect the severity of laxity from someone that's had an anterior shoulder dislocation. So that would be where the shoulder is exposed, most commonly in this position, and this allows the front part, the humerus, the head of the humerus, to come out and dislocate, i.e. come away from the glenoid fossa. Very painful, very nasty. So, what would be a positive sign when doing this test? Apprehension is absolutely key. If your patient feels like it's going to dislocate, chances are it will, so we have to be very respectful. Pain will also give us an indicator, but it's not as significant as the laxity or the apprehension that we find. So how do we do the test? It's very similar to the position I just showed you. What we're gonna do though is do it very, very slowly. So we're gonna start by abducting the patient's shoulder to 90 degrees if they're able to tolerate it. From here, this is all passively done by the way, from here, we're going to start to slowly laterally rotate and see if this elicits an apprehension response, a pain response, or if we feel that we can keep going, there's excessive laxity because we're gonna be testing the other side first, we know that we've got some laxity in here and we're gonna to need to use our physiotherapy and rehabilitation skills to try and stabilize this conservatively if appropriate and not for surgical opinion. So that's the anterior apprehension test. Now we mentioned something called the fulcrum test. This can be used if, you're, if the apprehension instability anteriorly is mild or to detect for a posterior impingement of the shoulder. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. So it's this, effectively, it's the same test. However, what we're gonna do is take our other hand and we're gonna scoop it under the posterior aspect of the humerus. So I'm here, I'm not on the scapula. And then I can come back down here and I can, if I want to, I can just leave the arm here or I can kind of try and flex my elbow just to provide a bit of more shear and then retest. That could show up your anterior apprehension a bit more, or if you're getting pain at the back, could indicate that posterior impingement. So that's the fulcrum one. We also mentioned a uh, relocation. This is also known as Job's. And the idea is, is it's an adjunct to the apprehension test, so the very first one. So we start with 90 degrees abduction. We start to come out into this position of lateral rotation, just as we did before, still looking for the signs of apprehension or pain or excessive laxity. If our patient suddenly goes, no, 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 that doesn't feel comfortable, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slightly come off so they still feel that bit of apprehension. And then we're gonna do an AP glide on the humeral head. If they suddenly go, ah, that feels better or easier, we know we're supporting the humerus and we're preventing that anterior translation, and that's considered positive if it reduces their pain or apprehension. So let's recap all those again. Anterior apprehension, abduct 90, laterally rotate. Fulcrum, same starting position, but we're pulling the humeral head forwards, same thing. The relocation, Job's. As we did before, get to the apprehension, press and see if it gives relief. You could also, not to complicate things too much for you, but if you wanted to, you could also try compressing to start with and then releasing to see if it makes a difference. It's all a kind of theory around the same idea. So do we use these a lot in clinical practice? Yes, very much so. Normally the subjective history will indicate an anterior dislocation and it can be a very good objective marker to see how they're getting on and also to see the state of the integrity of the joint capsule itself. 